Good morning. Working with my colleague, April Fernandez, we considered the President Johnson's commission uh, wrote about race, ethnicity, crime, and justice, and what we've learned in the ensuing 50 years. While the Crime Commission had much to say about race as it relates to crime, they said very little about groups other than blacks and whites, and did not directly address the issue of race in the criminal justice system. As did most criminologists during the 1960s, the commissioners seemed to accept uncritically that racial differences uh, in arrests for crimes accurately reflected racial differences in criminal involvement. Contemporary scholars are less accepting of this premise, uh, but I will return to this topic shortly. The commissioners, believing that African Americans committed disproportionate share of crimes, believed that the nation could reduce crime by ameliorating the root causes of high black crime and delinquency rates. Among the causes mentioned by the commission were high levels of poverty, inadequate housing, unequal access to both jobs and quality education, and racial residential segregation, uh, which confined a large segment of the black population uh, to criminogenic living circumstances. The commissioners believed that by addressing these, is these social issues, they would lower black crime and delinquency rates, and consequently the rates of the nation as a whole. In the decades after the publication of The Challenge of Crime in a Free Society, a considerable scholarly literature on race, ethnicity, crime, and justice has been published. One important characteristic of the most recent literature is that scholars have expanded their research beyond just blacks and whites uh, differences. Also, a consensus has now emerged among criminologists that arrest rates should not accept, be accepted uncritically to measure criminal involvement. Arrest rates are a good measure of police activity, but not so much a measure of who actually is committing the crimes. Using better measures, nearly all research criminologists today believe that African Americans are more involved in the commission of some crimes uh, than are members of other racial groups in the US. Uh, there is less consensus on the explanations for these differences. Explanations range from hypothesized biological differences to the damage resulting from individuals growing, amidst, uh, growing up amidst um, racism. We believe that the weight of the evidence suggests, and most research criminologists um, believe this, that there are not racial differences, uh, that there are not racial differences in involvement in all types of crimes. For those crimes where African Americans rates are higher, the evidence suggests that those higher rates are products of social and economic disadvantage and continued racial residential segregation of the most disadvantaged segments of the population. We should also recognize some important patterns among other racial and ethnic groups in the U.S. First, while Asian American uh, crime rates are generally lower than those of the white majority, there, this is less true for some national groups that we lump under the category of Asian. Second, Native Americans have higher rates of some crimes, perhaps most notably domestic violence. Third, a number of groups are lumped under the category of Hispanic, and their levels of criminal involvement differs. In general, Hispanic crime rates are intermediate between the rates of African Americans and whites. But among recent immigrants, contrary to the uh, popular narratives, the rate of involvement in violent crimes is lower than the native -born, uh, that of native-born residents of the US. President Johnson's commission, as I mentioned earlier, did not um, address racial disproportionality in the criminal justice system. Um, since then, a considerable literature on this topic has emerged um, and is, it continues to draw, be an important topic uh, drawing criminological attention. There is close to consensus that there is, a race, there is racial disproportionality uh, in the American um, justice system that cannot be accounted for by higher criminal involvement of African Americans and Hispanics. The debate among criminologists is over the question of how much of that disproportionality uh, can be accounted for by racial and ethnic differences in criminal involvement. To summarize the current state of our collective understanding, I'd like to refer you to an article published last year in the Journal of Quantitative Criminology by Alan Beck of BJS, who is here with us, and Al Bloomstein, who you heard from a bit earlier. In racial disproportionality in U.S. prisons, state prisons, accounting uh, for the effects of racial and ethnic differences in criminal involvement, arrest, sentencing, uh, and time served, Beck and Bloomstein explained the question, examined the question how much of racial and ethnic differences in imprisonment 
can be accounted for by racial and, difference, racial and ethnic differences in criminal involvement. They report that accountability for those serving sentences for murder and rape are high. The accountability for other violent crimes and property crimes is lower, and the accountability for drug offenses is low. In other words, blacks and Hispanics uh, are imprisoned for crimes less serious than murder and rape at levels that cannot be justified by higher involvement in those crimes. This leads to two important sets of research and policy questions that a new crime commission uh, should have on their agenda. First, why do racial and ethnic patterns in criminal involvement that, we have, that have been observed uh, and what can we be done about them? As I've said, we have partial answers to these questions, but we still need better understanding. We know that the nation has made progress in addressing inequalities that, the pre that President Johnson's commission described, um, but as, as criminal, uh, described as criminogenic, but much remains to be done. A second important question for that commission would be, um, why do legally unjustifiable disparities in the criminal justice system continue, and what can be done to address these inequalities in the application of justice? This is especially important if the country does, in fact, move forward towards criminal justice reform in this age of mass incarceration. Finally, a crime commission for the 21st century should make racial differences in criminal involvement and victimization and inequalities in the criminal justice system a central concern. These inequalities negatively affect the lives of not only of members of the communities of color, but of all Americans. They reduce, they reduce effective crime control because of damage is done uh, and the relationships between the communities um, and those charged with protecting them. They damage families and the futures of children of color. In addition, they have the perverse negative effects on democratic involvement and consequently on our democracy. For the United States to move towards forming that more perfect union, we have to look towards addressing inequalities that lead to crime and towards reducing inequalities in our justice system. A crime commission for the 21st century could be an important step in that direction. Thank you.